<laughs> it's my turn. Well, I just want to say welcome and thank you very much for having me. Um, this is an unusual year in that there's all of these fiber shows that are all virtual and although it's weird i am happy to be here and thank you very much for attending and for um and i'm going to say it wrong as well <laughs> but our lovely host for hosting us in fiber love affair and all of that fun stuff uh, legally this is being recorded so anybody who has just joined us please know that it will go out on the internet afterwards um, i believe they put it up on youtube so we'll just say all of that right up front and welcome uh, I am Dragon Strings, and like we were saying before, I am an indie yarn company, dyer, it's just me, really, um, and I am on the shores of Georgian Bay, which is out in Ontario, Lake Huron, and a little, little tiny town called Victoria Harbor. We do have a boat, so I mean, we're not that far away from being a harbor, but um, it's lovely out here, and I dye knitting yarns, and my whole idea is that I dye the unusual and the one of a kind and the stuff you're not going to find a lot of other places. There's a lot of other dyers out there. They make beautiful things. But as we all know, all dyers have a different palette that they enjoy. And my tends to be on the neon black light and rainbow end of that spectrum, which is very different from colorist who we just saw. She does all those lovely tonal colors and mine is the opposite. So I have a few different things that I could talk about today. Um, and I teach. So I teach dyeing and I teach color work. Um, and so I have about three different little presentations in the back of my head that I could start spewing information about. And I'm wondering if there's anybody out there that has any questions about something in particular. Um, the things that I sort of have presentations ready to go are color and color work and working with fades, um, different dye techniques, and um, the, the properties of color and how to get different colors down there. And I'm just wondering if anybody has any one of those that they are more interested in. Um, if you do, please pop it into the chat. I can see it come up on my screen and we can, we can go from there. If not, I'm just gonna start with some basic color knowledge so that it will help us for all of the other ones. But if you if you have any questions, oh, somebody said fades. Okay, so we, we will go more into fades, color work and fades, color work and fades. Okay, good. So um, that being said, I'm still gonna start with the basics of color because that affects everything else. So when you're talking about color, what you, what laymen talk about and what, um, so a little bit about me, a background, I am a graphic designer, a photographer, and a screen printer. So I lived in the world of, of color for many, many years before I started doing this. Um, there's, there's color, and then there's the technicalities of color. And so I'm going to pull up, um, I have an ability to do a yarn close-up here, and I am going to pull up my close-up down here, because I'm going to talk about the hue and the tone and so so when we say those things those are the properties of color and so when we say the hue what we are talking about is the color the blue the purple the orange the red the actual the the light properties that bounce it back into your eyes and give it that color now so you can have the hue that is blue. Then you can do something called shade and tint and tone. So when you tint, you make the color lighter. You add white, or if you're speaking about dye, you add less dye to the pot so it becomes lighter in value. You can also shade a color. And so when you shade a color, and when I say color, I'm using that interchangeable with hue because that's what most people think of. So you have your hue, you have your tint, and you have your shade, okay? And shade is adding black to a hue. So you take your color and you add black to it. 
When you add both black and white, it is called toning. And so when you do that to yarn, what ends up happening is it is, this yarn has been dyed with the blue dye from this one, but it has had black added to it and it is a very pale color. So I added more water to the dye pot. So there was less dye molecules per gram of fiber that I was dyeing. So we have a hue, a tint, a shade, and a tone. And I'm just gonna refer to hue and tone from here on out. So I'm just gonna refer to these two. So what I say when I talk about hue and tone, and this is important, I promise, to go back to the color work and the fades. This is, this is how you make your color work and your fades work. Your hue is very important. The color that you make something is very important. Almost more important is the tone of your yarn, the amount of black or white that it has in it, okay? So when you talk about tone and color and color work, when you're mixing colors together, and I don't have the ability to do this on screen, I'm sorry, a very quick trick that we've all heard is turn it black and white to see if you have enough contrast. The reason that they talk about doing that, and it's why you'll hear that in, in any color work class, you'll hear, turn it black and white, take a picture of your yarn, turn it black and white. What you're actually looking at when you turn something black and white is the amount of black or white in that yarn, as well as the color information. So you're taking the hue out and you're only looking at the tone. And so what happens when you talk about that is when you're trying to get something into a high contrast state, you're trying to get something like my scarf, right? This is, this is black and white. This is as tone different as you can get. Well, this isn't really black. This is a charcoal color. But this is a high tone difference, although there's no hue difference there whatsoever. When you talk about colors, and if you've ever heard color vibrating, that's when you put two colors up to each other and then your eyes kind of go, ooh, I, I don't think I enjoy that. You'll see it at Christmas a lot. The red and the green that everybody puts together, you look at that transition and it's an unhappy transition. It's called vibration. What's happening when you're talking about those two is you have two colors with the same tone. So although they have different hues, I'll switch over here again. Although these two have different hues, but orange is probably a little bit lighter than the blue. There we go. Although those two colors have different hues, they have similar tones. If we were to turn this black and white, I bet that this red would be a little bit lighter, but not much lighter than that blue. And you would have almost no contrast. So that would work in something that you're striping because there's nice solid changes. But as soon as you have something that has any sort of movement, like color work, like a fair aisle, you're going to lose your stitch definition, even though the hues are so drastically different. Our eyes are really good and they're actually better at picking up changes in light and dark than they are in color, right? That's when you see when you're in a low light environment, all the colors get faded out because that's a higher level function. The colors are the higher level. It's rods and cones and science stuff, but you'll see more information from the tone. And so when you have two hues that are similar tone, your eyes don't differentiate those as well as they would with two that are higher in contrast tone wise. So if I took that blue, this blue, and I found, hmm, one. I found another blue that is lighter. Those two would be very lovely in color work because they have that high tone contrast. And so you would see all of the definition, like, like on my scarf here, transition again here, like on here, actually, hold on. Come over to this camera you can see on my scarf that because i have the high tones they are that you can see that color work there very well 
So when you're talking about fading, this is where this really comes into its own. Because you can have, sorry, I keep walking away from my mic. I know I'm doing it. I apologize. Um, you can have, this is a really good example of fading because the hues are different, but the tones are the same. And so what happens is you pull the color from one into the other. And now I have done a fade technique in here. You're four, four, two, 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 four, two, whatever transition you decide upon. But because I've kept the tones similar, the color work fades well. And you can see that it works well up there and it works well down here because I've kept the tones. This blue and this gray are very similar in tone. This purple and this blue are very similar in tone. Where I didn't match it is in the middle. And so there's two things going on in the middle there. The reason you can see the striping is because there is a tone and color difference, hue and tone difference. Because I've changed from a blue to a pink, and I did not pull enough of this blue color into this pink, and you do that when you look at colors. So if I was to look at two fade colors, pull these out here. Uh -huh. do, do, do yarn close up. There we go, transition. So when we look at fades, what I suggest is to make sure that all the yarns have a similar. Now, this is specifically if you want things to blend together, because our eyes are good at blending things together of the same tone. That's what we went through before. So these three all have the white in them. That's going to help pull everything through because the same color is going from one to the next to the next. It's gonna look homogenous through the whole project. The next thing that helps this is that with these yarns in particular, because these were specifically dyed as a fade, now you don't always have to buy yarns that were specifically dyed to fade together, you can find them. You know, you go in and in different times, you would go into your local yarn shop and you would hold the yarns up to each other and you'd go, okay, the blue that's in this one is in this one. The pink that's in this one is in this one. So the red in here and the green, the green is in this one for sure, right? So I have pulled the green into the red. I've also pulled just the ever so slightest, it's kind of buried in here tiniest bit of that red into the middle skein. And then from the middle skein, I've taken this dark blue and I've pulled it over here into the purple. Um, and I think there is, there should be it's buried also. There's a little bit of green in this one as well. It's not coming across on camera at all, but there is some of those speckles down there, I promise. So when you fade those three together, because you've gone back to working with hue and tone, you'll fade well. Okay, so the tone is the more important for fading and for the color work, like strong color work, fair isle stuff. Um, when you talk about, now it doesn't have to be, you can change both at the same time. You can, it's harder. And I'm gonna hold up a sample that is not my yarn, but that's okay. This is Fleece Artist when she did her Cross Canada 150. And I thought that was a good, you know, good Cross Canada trip here we're doing. And I have faded three of her yarns together that change drastically in both what you have to fit what you have to figure out when you're doing something like this when you're changing a fade very strong tonal change and very strong hue change is you have to have the same color in both schemes 
So going back to what we had down there, this here has this, these two, it's actually this, this brownie color. There's a, there's a tan color in this one. And it's exactly the same in this ball here. So because that homogenous one is pulling through both of them, like you're looking at the part where I actually transition there. I also did it ridiculously long over like, I think I started with one row of my transition color and then five of my second color, two rows, the first color, four rows. Like it was very long that I did that. That's another way you can get it to help is to stretch out that transition. So it, it's right there. That tan color is coming and it's pulling across so you're not seeing the lines. When we come down here, that tan color fades out. It's not in this last ball here, but the color that is, is that light blue. So this blue color here is in this middle section and it's also over here. There's less of it in this one. So overall, the whole scheme looks darker. It's a darker tone overall, but it has it in both. And that's why you can see the transition there or not see the transition more accurately. So that's fading and why, why we tell you to turn things black and white. Um, that's the, the, the magic and the thinking behind that little thing. So somebody's asking, how do I take a class? I teach mostly out in Ontario. Um, I do have private lessons that I do set up and you can send me an email at yarny at dragonstrings.ca and we can work something out. There'll be Zoom um, if you've got a particular project that you're working on. Um, and if anybody across Canada, because I do travel, wants to have me in, uh, once the world opens back up, I can come and I can teach, lecture, whatever that you're looking for. Uh, best way to find out about what's coming up is my website, uh, dragonstrings.ca. And also my Instagram is my social media I'm most on. Um, email is probably the best way to get a hold of me though. I don't follow the messages very well. Um, right, so one other thing with the website, because I just mentioned it, there is a code on there right now um, for all you lovely people who are joining me, of course. There is, um, I wrote it down somewhere, Fiber Love with a capital F and a capital L. So I will just type that into the chat really quick here. Boop. Um, and that will just give you 10% off everything in my shop. Um, and the other thing that I am able to offer is $5 shipping. So it's $5 flat rate shipping. So you order one skein and you order five skeins, it is still $5. If you order less than four, they will come as a letter mail. There will be no tracking. That's an upcharge. But if you order over four schemes, the tracking is automatically included as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's tone and hue. You got to pay attention to both of them. Um, they're, they're, they're what makes color work work. Okay. So does anybody have any questions about that and why? Cause I just went down a rabbit hole there. I know I did. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, there, the, the difference is important and obviously pick colors you love because that is, I am, I am, I am not one to say color is not <laughs> important by any means, but the, the paying attention to the amount of tone is useful um, to get the effect that you're looking for. Now, and, and like we said, you want high contrast, you want to be able to see all your fair while, fair isle, definitely make sure they're different in tone. You want them to fade, maybe put them closer together on that side. Got all these lovely yarns on my table here. So, yeah, thank you. What was the pattern in the Fleece Artist Parks that you showed? Ooh, that is a fantastic question. That sample is very old. It is available on my Ravelry. 
So I am acid freeze on Ravelry and all my store samples are available as projects on there. So please, you know, stock me on Ravelry and find it on there. I believe it is called find your path, but I don't remember. And I meant to look it up and I didn't and I apologize. Um, this one I can is from the Cabin Fever's book and it is from their Need a Circular Yoke book. And they are a lovely duo trio out in Ontario. And uh, they publish patterns that are more like recipes. So I got to choose my neckline, my sleeve style, my amount of ease and my shaping in this particular garment. My RAV name is Acid Freeze. I will type that into the chat here. Uh, there we go. Um, and I'm, I apologize for not having that. I really should have prepared that better. I just pulled that out at the last minute because it was a great example of fade. Do you have a link for the pullover shirt pattern? That I do not have a link. Oh, thank you very much, Melanie, for pulling that up. Um, it is cabin fever uh, need a circular yoke. And that's a book that you can publish, but it is a how-to guide. So, yeah. And the ladies who do that book, uh, Deb and Lynn, are fantastic people as well. I, I teach and, and talk to them quite often. Uh, Lynn owns Shellridge Yarns, and Deb and Lynn both own Cabin Fever Yarns. So, they're a great duo out here. Okay. So... Uh, I do ship to the U.S., so U.S. is $15 flat rate shipping. Um, I can ship anywhere in the world. If you're outside of Canada or the U.S., it is going to be very variable right now. Unfortunately, I cannot seem to get anybody to commit to any store stability in overseas shipping, but I do ship overseas. Just shoot me an email, and I will find a carrier for that. U.S. is just $15. Bucks. It's going to go out... Uh, Part of the Canada Post United Postal Service system. So heads up that shipping times might be a little bit delayed at the moment, although they seem to be working out the issues there. Uh, it looks like things are about three weeks right now. So yeah, and it's, it's $15 to US, $5 to Canada. I should have been clearer on that. And yeah, so, and that coupon code will work as well, the fiber love um, on there. So what else am I going to talk about? What are we at for time-wise here? Okay. Um, that's color, that's dye techniques, that's working with variegated fades. Oh, one other thing, when you're talking about fading, the techniques that work the best for fading are not solids. And that's why you see a lot of fades working with indie dyers, because indie dyers, I mean, as much as we try, a solid is never a solid. It is always a tonal. Um, I mean, that's we just do not have the equipment to make the yarns uniform as a rule. There are indie dyers out there that specialize that in that. I am not one of them. I don't even like dyeing the same thing twice. <laughs> so when you're looking at colors from indie dyers, you can do it with speckles or with, so, so you can have your speckles and that's why fades use speckles because speckles pull across really well. So these two yarns here, let's transition this so we can actually see. So although those two there have very different colors, they would actually fade fairly well. Paint the town. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. That is the name of the shawl that that uh, she had. She post stocked me on Ravelry and found it. So thank you very much. Um, right. So these two would fade because the colors of the speckles are being pulled across. So this dark blue in here is in this skein here as well. 
um, and the green is the same speckle in here. So you can do it with different dye techniques like that as well. So if you have one that's like highly speckled, even though these look very different, they would fade fairly well. The other thing that's gonna help these two fade is the white color coming through. And if you turn them to black and white, although this would be very dark, the rest of this skein is fairly light in tone. So indie dyers work really well for fades. Um, and I'm getting entirely too much yarn under my table. It doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> so, um, what else was I gonna, oh, okay. So we talked about that. We talked about contrasting colors. These, these two, I will show as examples of contrasting colors because this is a part of a collective that I'm out in out here in, well, it started in Ontario. It is actually international at this point. Um, it's called, if you want to be a unicorn, be a freaking unicorn. And the idea is that we have um, a group of makers. So it's not just dyers. There's bag makers. There's um, artists who specialize in fleece. There's charm makers, there's all sorts of people. There's probably about 40 people who have signed up already. The idea is that on May 1st through 24th, we all release a colorway uh, or a special collection of some sort that is unicorn themed. And that is as close to a description as we're gonna get because those are all over the map. Um, and then part of the proceeds of that for indie dyers, it is $5 a skein. For makers of small goods, it is 20% of the purchase price goes to help um, the vulnerable youth in your community and the LGT, LBT. <laughs> oh my goodness, LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> <laughs> I always screw up that order. I'm sorry. Um, and my my local charity, and it is a, a charity of the maker's choice in their community. So my um, the people that I've partnered with is the Gilbert Center in Barrie, Ontario, and they are a they were originally developed as an AIDS foundation. However, have transitioned over to help everybody in the community. Um, just a general resource in the area. And these, and I will do this here, are my, if you want to be a unicorn colorway. So I have a bigger, better example of these guys, don't worry. So I have, because I was not seeing a lot of dark and, you know, not everybody wants to be a bright rainbow. I came up with the idea of light and dark light side, dark side. Um, and both of these yarns are part of my speciality and they glow under black light. So the, they pair well because the black is technically a tone of the light. So I dyed these both in this light colorway and then I put black over top of this one. So, you can see that the color in there, that pink is in there, they would fade well. You can see that they look fairly strong as a contrast. Um, and so when you do color work with them, because of course that's what I have to try and do, they do show up. You do lose some of the detail. I mean, you're, you're losing some of it in here where the, the light and dark aren't quite strong enough, but they do show up. So that's my contribution. That's the, if you want to be a unicorn, be a freaking unicorn. Please follow them on Instagram and there's a website set up as well. All the makers products, not just mine, will go live May 1st and will be available from May 1st to 24th. That's it. When we wrap it up, we donate to our cause and the idea is that you, you buy in May to knit in June. 
And so those are my unicorn colors. And they don't really have more fancy names than if you want to be a freaking unicorn, be a freaking unicorn light. And if you want to be a unicorn, be a freaking unicorn dark, because that's simple. And those are my yarns there. So that's a special new thing that's happening. And uh, yeah, hope everybody <laughs> can join in with my yarns, local makers, whoever, um, please support. And at least if you don't financially support, go and click all the love buttons because it's a great initiative. And uh, they're doing good work, so. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I have rambled on? <laughs> there's unicorns, there's dye colors, and there's fades. So, fleece artist. Okay. Uh, what is the shawl you have on? Um, names for the yarns, your own. Um, yes, shine through. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Melanie is on the ball. Thank you so much. Uh, shine through by Monster Knits. I did know this one. Um, and yarns for the name, your own. The Be a Freaking Unicorn ones is part of the collective. That is what they came up with for the name. Um, and their Instagram is at Be a Freaking Unicorn. And their website is Be a Freaking Unicorn.com dot ca apologize um and the yarns names for the yarns my own so the rest of my yarns are named crazily um i guess i should explain a little bit if you go on my site what's happening there you'll see two sections to my site you'll see make me die which is a list of uh, about 20 colors that I can dye fairly consistently, and you can get those on any base you want in any quantity you want. So if you want, you know, 15 of this one, you go in the Make Me Dye, you place an order there, and they will they will come to your door in about three to four weeks because it takes me a little while because I create specifically for you on that side of the site. The other side of the site is the WYSIWYG site because I am a child of the 90s and I am a geek. <laughs> And so what you see is what you get. Those are the exact yarns you see behind me. So I have already dyed them and they are up on the site. Those ones are one of a kind. They are exactly that. What you see is what you get. Most of the yarns that you're seeing here that I've pulled out to show you, those are up on the site. You can purchase them immediately. They'll go out probably within 48 hours. Um, but I cannot re recreate them. So they are, they are what you see, what you get. That's where I get to have my creativity and I get to play in the dye pots and just, you know, throw color and see what happens. And sometimes it doesn't work. And that's when I have a run of black because if a color thing doesn't work, you can always over dye it black. So, um, but those ones are available as well. And then the make me dyes are the ones that are always available. I have a section there for stockists. If anybody is um, wondering if their local yarn shop or if they own a yarn shop can get in there, I am taking wholesale orders. So there's a section on the website for those guys. Um, there is a section for collaborators. If you have a pattern that you are uh, featuring my yarn in, please shoot me a collaborator email on the site and they will come to me and I will feature you in my Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And there is also a collaborator kickback program, kind of like an affiliate program, where if you use your links and people buy yarn, then you'll get special stuff at the back end for that. Um, we're just trying it out. The website is fairly new. If you run into any hinks, jinx, and all that kind of stuff, please let me know. Uh, but those are the two sides of the site. And thank you for the beautiful yarn comment. So, and be a freaking unicorn. Yes, somebody linked to the site there. It is a great initiative. So, uh, I don't really have too much more to say. Does anybody have any 
anything that they're looking to see or color questions or anything like that that they're they're wondering about um the i what is your favorite color at this time thank you for the color comment uh favorite color Ooh. Probably the Be a Freaking Unicorn because it's the newest one I did. Um, but also the always, I guess, Roy's in the Clouds. This is one of my, this is my best selling yarn as well. This is a space dyed yarn with a lovely rainbow on there. So, and. It works out so that you just get a, a pop of color every so often. Um, but because I was excited about doing the pop of color that was probably about four or five stitches long, I went, hmm, I wonder if I can get that down. I wonder if I can get shorter pops of color. And so I have been experimenting. And last year-ish, just before everything went sideways, I came up with... Aurora Borealis, and this is my other favorite color at the moment, because this is sort of the same idea as Roy, but darker and smaller. And so I will switch over to this camera here for a second. And those little pieces there, and there is a whole rainbow in there, it's just all spread out. So those are incredibly small, they're probably about one centimeter long. It's done with a technique called reverse um, resisting. I'm just grabbing my sample because I have one. And what ends up happening with that yarn is, it's maybe not going to come across on camera very well. Let's do it on this one. They end up being one stitch. So you get a field of the dark with one stitch of those other colors. And it looks like 80 sprinkles. <laughs> and the thing that I am playing with now is making all of those sprinkles glow under black light because that is my new jam as well. And uh, I, I really like things that not fluoresce because that, that's very, very, very difficult to do in, in uh, yarn like glow in the dark but having them pop in the 80s um where they just you know you get the black light and your college dorm and i apparently never outgrew that aesthetic so i'm still jammed to that and uh it's pretty cool I, I can't show it on camera but if you go on my website a lot of my yarns there's a collection of them or the individual yarns themselves will have a black light photo and you'll see what they do when you, you know, glow, glow bowling or have a rave in your house. Um, and they're fun, they're fun. So those dyes are fairly new as well. Uh, fireside, a common blend you make. Probably not considering I'm not entirely sure which one that is. <laughs> and that is something you will find with the WYSIWYGs. I do so many of them. <laughs> I am probably older than you think I am. <laughs> um, I, I do so many yarns that are one of a kind that the names, they, are, they all come from basically what's in my ears. I'm listening to podcasts or I'm listening to YouTube or I'm listening to audiobooks and, you know, it'll be talking about something and I have it. Um, and it's dark rust. Uh, it, it without a picture, I'm I'm lost. I'm just as lost as anybody else because those those yarns got labeled when they got labeled, but they are one of thousands that I have created. Um, and I love all my yarns, but I don't remember them all. So, <sighs> so pick yes, send me a picture. I can create yarns that I have created before um usually to a fairly accurate degree so if you were looking for to me to recreate something i can do that as well um and how did i start in this career 
I went, I, I was in the corporate world. I mentioned that I was a graphic designer. I did corporate graphic design for approximately 10 years and I loved it, but got done, burnt out. It is such a competitive market. Um, and though I was in an in-house design position, I still, it was just too much. And I have been knitting since the time I was about 17. And I've always loved fiber and I've always loved color. And I went, hmm, I wonder. And so I started throwing yarn and color in the same pot. And that's what happened. And I liked it. So I continued. And that was about six years ago. Actually, it was longer than that that I started experimenting. Six years ago was when I went full time with Dragon Strings. And I'm still learning. I'm still throwing color in pots. And that's why I love the WYSIWYG section of the site, because that's where you'll see those weird experiments that may or may not make it into the permanent list of colors. More often than not, they don't. They're lovely colors, but there's they're too intensive or they're, you know, they're my jam, but there's little, not very many people like me out there. Um, and so that's my story. I, uh, yeah, I fell into it and loved it. I knew I wanted to die after I took my first eye course. So I took a course with Lynn, who I was speaking about from Shelridge Yarns. And by the time I finished that course, I said, I love this. I want to do this more. This is this is my jam. This is my screen printing background coming in and all that kind of stuff. So it was fun. It is fun. And I have a lot of fun in the studio. Uh, what book am I reading at the moment? I'm curious. I am reading Grunt, I think is the one. It's Mary Roach and she does a whole series of one. <laughs> I wanted to die. Yes, I want to die every single day. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, Mary Roach does a whole series of books and they are, uh, she's looking into the different parts of the world that are not super knowledgeable. She had one called Stiff um, and then this one is Grunt, which is all about the military. And there, other than that, I listen to a lot of fantasy, like tons. That would be why my company is called Dragon Strings. Um, and all of my yarn bases uh, are based off of mythological creatures. So we have Sleepnar, which is Odin's eight-legged horse because it has eight strands. It is an actual eight-ply yarn, um, two-step twist process that is very cool. Actually, let's go over that. Why not? So Sleepnar is my go-to sock base. And the reason that I say it is my rock star of a yarn is that it has four two ply yarns. So each, so those of you who are spinners can see that I have four plies, but well, everybody can see that you don't have to be a spinner. But the unusual thing about this is that each one of these plies is actually made up of two plies itself doesn't quite come across on camera, but that is two individual plies there. And with the two-step twist process, what ends up happening is the yarn is very, I, I call it the smoosh factor, because we can't, we can't go into booths and you can't smoosh this, but this yarn is very smooshy. It is a very round yarn. Yeah, cabled eight ply is amazing, yes. And it has great stiff definition. And the other thing that it has is great wearability because the, the tighter your twist in yarn, the more durable your yarn is. That's why like Regia and all those commercial sock yarns, they are, they're twisted and they wear like crazy, but they're not super soft because the more twist that you put in yarn, the harder the yarn, you lose the squish. So with doing the two-step process, you keep the bounce and the smoosh, 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 and you still get the twist in there to get the durability. So 
that's my Slipnar base. That's my, that's my, my, you know, rock solid. And the other lovely thing about this particular one is it is machine washable. The laundry monsters do not enjoy eating and snacking on this yarn. It can go in the washing machine, no problem. I would still lay flat to dry, but if they get bundled up with your pants, they're fine. It's, it's the only yarn I have that I will say that about, but that's fine. And that's why I adore that yarn. Um, the other yarns that I have have great uses for what they're used for. My shawl is made out of the uh, Amarac and it has got cashmere in it and it is so smooshy. So it is just smooshy, smoosh. Um, other ones, I have a Luna, which is a single ply and Luna is actually a sun goddess. So that is hers and that is 100% superwash merino. There is no silk in there even though you may think there is because this particular way this one is spun, it, it almost has a luminescence to it. Um, I have, now I'm just naming bases. Uh, oh, the fun one that I have, fun ones that I have, I guess, are my, these guys came in last year and these are my two new Lux bases. And when I say Lux, I mean, I never want to stop squishing these yarns. Um, they are amazing. This particular one here is called Naga. I will transition so we can look at the pretty yarns. This one is a yak and silk. And the shimmer on the sky, because it is 50% silk, is incredibly luscious. These come in 50 gram skeins. Um, and they are just the drape that you get because of the silk and the yak is amazing. And the other luxury base that I just got, because I'm allergic to mohair, so you won't find any bases with mohair because I can't work with them. So the popularity of all of the fuzzy sweaters was driving me nuts and I wanted to knit with them. So I came across this base which is a 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 20% mulberry silk. And it is just as fluffy as most of those mohairs. Um, you can see the fluff in there, but the silk is, this, is the strong core. And so it can be held and used in place of mohair, pretty much one for one if it calls for a mohair lace. Uh, and I'm having a lot of fun getting some unusual colors on this base because there's not a ton of neon fuzzy yarns out there. Um, and the way that the dyes react is quite, quite amusing to me. This one in particular really glows under black light. If you look on the site, that colorway, which is, it's a donut. <laughs> just glows under the black light. It's pretty fun. Um, and those are my, my newest, my two newest ones. So, yeah. Um, I have, I have thicker yarns as well. I have a worsted weight, um, which is hiding up here called fairy wrap. It's just a great, 100% superwash merino, and then there's a DK as well that is sort of its baby sister, 100% super weight, and it's called Pixie Wrap. So those two go sort of hand in hand, whether you're looking for the double knitting or the worsted weight. Um, and then I have my cashmeres. I have a, and this is my naked stuff. Oh, and this guy, he's fun too. This is a yak sock yarn. It's called Yak Shaw. Um, have you got any samples in the Surrey Surrey blend? Not on me. Um, no, it is new enough that I do not have any samples right now. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, the new bases, you can find them under the Make Me Die. They're always there uh, and you can get all those colors. Um, and if not in the WYSIWYG, they'll be under their individual bases. Uh, the Surrey is called Ikiko. And the yak and silk is called Naga. 
So just look them up by the base that are in the top thing. They're both a fingering weight yarn. Um, this is a yak nylon um, and merino blend for socks. And it has amazing stitch definition. That one's yak shot. I don't have a ton of this. I'm not even sure there's any up on the site other than in the make me die section. And then my cashmere's. That's what Michelle's made out of. So this is a merino nylon cashmere blend that has smoosh, smoosh. And I wish you guys could all see this and feel this. And if you come to my booth and you see me, um, there's usually about four of us in there. I have my gang and they're amazing. And they will literally huck yarn at people and you have to catch it and squish it because that's what I think everybody needs to do. Um, and some of these bases are just, they are meant to be felt. And I want you guys to feel them. <laughs> and I wish you could. So, I mean, me squishing things on camera is not really going to, to help, but uh, pet the yak, come pet the yak. <laughs> Someday soon. So, yeah. Is there any... Still pretty satisfying. <laughs> I, I'm one of those uh, AMSR where I squish, squish, squish. <laughs> yak is beautiful. I love working with yak. That's why I have brought it in in the two bases. Um, it is a fairly amazing fiber. It's warmer than wool, um, it's about 30% warmer than wool, which is why I like it as a blend. The 5050 Yak Silk, the Nagas, these guys, because they have the silk in them, they actually end up being a reasonable temperature. Um, and the, the Yak Sock Yarn, because it is such a low Yak content, there's only 10% Yak in there, um, they make it so you can wear them. <laughs> because I have a couple of blends that I was testing out that are higher and I, I love the socks that I made, but I can wear them two days a year. And I live in Canada. They are so warm. <laughs> so with the silk, this one in particular, the silk is such a cooling fabric that these skeins, they're nice and they work both in the, the warmer place and the cooler, um, not cooler, but you can, you can use them in the cooler temperatures the warmer structure. Yes, if you have cold feet, yak is your baby. Uh, it, it is such a warming fabric. Um, wool socks in general help, but the yak is really a blend that is warm. It's warm. It, wool hats, I have wool mittens, uh, yak mittens, I mean, um, because it is such a warming fabric. Uh, why the interest in black light with your colors? I just never grew up. Uh, I think everybody goes through that phase when you're, you know, 13 and you like the, you have the black light and the college dorm and the lava lamps and yeah, I, I still have the lava lamps and I still have the black lights and <laughs> that's just me. And uh, it's interesting in fabric to see it. And it's, it's kind of like having a little hidden secret. And I like things that they have two sides to them. And that's why I did the dark and the light unicorns because uh, duality is you know in life there is duality there's light and dark and the black light is just that hidden side of me that I may dress up and pretend to be an adult and then you get to know me and I'm not <laughs> I am so not <laughs> I have no excuses I don't even have kids I just I just never grew up so <laughs> And I think we're coming to the end here of our hour. So I will thank everybody one more time and I will give you your bingo word because we all have bingos. And they've given me the, the um, word back light, B-A-C-K light, as opposed to black light, but it is, it is back light. And that is your bingo word from me and website. It was a typo or autocorrect. <laughs> oh, so it was supposed to be black light. Okay, I wasn't sure. <laughs> Maybe you'll take both. <laughs> um, but that's your bingo word. The website that I can be found, dragonstrings.ca. 
Uh, my Instagram account is dragon underscore strings. And my Facebook is dragon store strings. And again, website, and you can contact me on there. You can also contact me via my email address, yarny at dragonstrings.ca. If you have any custom anything or anything you want to talk about, I'm happy to do all of that stuff. Um, $5 shipping. Oh, and Fiber Love on the website will give you 10% off for a week, only for one week till next Saturday. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melanie, for putting all my links in there that you are so handy. <laughs> and does anybody have any other questions or anything that you're, before I go, is any last thoughts or anything kicking around? What was the bingo word? Bingo word is backlight. So B-A-C-K-L-I-G-H-T. Thank you. Thank you. I try. I hope I gave you guys some value. And I will squish, 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 squish. <laughs> and I'll see you guys soon for squishing later. Mm -hmm.